This is a medium level SQL problem on LeetCode. I'll show you what this problem is and how to solve it in this video. This is problem 177 on LeetCode called nth highest salary. We have one table here called employee. It has two columns, one for the ID and one for the salary. The question we need to answer is shown here. Write a solution to find the nth highest salary from the employee table. If there is no nth highest salary, return null. When we see the letter n, like it has been written here as nth highest, it means that the letter n can be substituted for a number. So we want to be able to find the second highest or third highest or eighth highest. If we scroll down, we can see the sample data and expected output. There are three records in the table with salaries of 100, 200 and 300. The expected output shows a number of 200 here. It says n equals two, which means we are looking for the second highest salary. Interestingly, we have a column heading here called get nth highest salary two. This looks like a function call and not a database column. We can see a second example here, which has a single row in the table. If a value of two is provided for n, which means we are looking for the second highest value. There is only one row in the table, so there is no second highest value. This means a value of null is returned. On the right of the screen, we normally have an SQL query editor panel. However, within this panel is some code to create a function. So the expectation with this problem is to create and run a function to provide this answer. That explains the expected output. So not only do we have to write the SQL query to get the result, we have to write it in a function. Let's get started. First, we'll start with something simple. I'll run a select query to see the employees sorted by salary in descending order. We do this by selecting both the ID and salary columns from the employee table, and then adding an order by salary desk to the query. I'll write this after the function code here. I don't want to start by creating a function as I want to start with a simple query, get it right, and then add it to the function. I can click on run, but I see this error. It says, runtime error, you have an error in your SQL syntax. This part here indicates where the error starts, where it says, to use near, and then the dash then create function. So this code has failed because having a dash then the function is not valid. It seems like the function code is meant to be commented out, but a single dash is not the comment character. What if we comment out this whole block of code? We can do that by surrounding it in block comment characters, which is slash, then a star. The code will change to green. Let's try run this again. We get another runtime error, which says function test dot get nth highest salary does not exist. So it seems like this problem requires that function to be created. It makes things a little harder to get started, but it's okay. Let's uncomment this code and remove those dashes. What if we just put our query inside the function like this text has asked us? Let's run this code. We get a different runtime error. It says operand should contain one column. What does this mean? Well, the function is expected to return a single column and our select query has two columns, which is causing the function to return two columns. So let's update our code. We'll remove the ID column as we're only expecting the salary to be shown. We run the code and we can see a different error. It says subquery returns more than one row. Well, this error normally happens if we have a subquery that expects a single row, but multiple rows are returned. How can we change our code so that only one row is returned? There's a concept called row limiting in SQL that allows you to specify the number of rows to return. It's different to the where clause. The where clause allows you to specify criteria that must be true for a row to be returned. The query could return zero rows, one row, 10 rows, or thousands of rows, depending on the criteria. But row limiting is different. It allows you to specify the exact number of rows to return. You can use it with a where clause or without it. We want to use row limiting to ensure we only get one row back. To do this in MySQL, we use the limit keyword. We add the number one, so we only get one row. We add this at the end of the query before the semicolon. It should give us a single row and avoid the error we got before. Let's run this code. We can see the output here. It says wrong answer. Well, it's progress. We no longer get an error. Let's look into this. The output we got was 300. 
the expected output shown here is 200. There's an argument here with a value of 2. This is used as a parameter to the function. The purpose of the argument or parameter is to specify which highest salary to get. The value of 2 means get the second highest salary. In our sample data, the second highest salary is 200. We have returned a value of 300 because we ordered by salary highest to lowest and used limit 1 to get the first row. What can we do? Well, we need to get a single row, which is what we're doing, but we want to get the correct row. We want to look for the row in the list that matches the provided parameter. We can do this in MySQL by using the offset keyword next to limit. This offset keyword will tell the database to move down the list of results when looking for the rows to return with the limit keyword. By itself, the limit keyword starts at the first row. In our example, we have a limit 1, which means it gets the first row. We add offset 1, which will move down one row and get the second row only. So start after the first row and get one row. Let's run this. The output says accepted. Our answer is correct. However, this will always return the second highest salary. It ignores the parameter that is provided. If we were to run this function with a value of 1 or 3, then it will return the wrong value. A better way to write this query is to include the value of the parameter n in the query. We can do this by changing offset 1 to offset n. We run this and see we get the wrong answer. We get a value of 100 and we are expecting 200. This is because the value of n is 2 and we offset by 2. We should offset by 1 for the second highest value. If the parameter was 3, we should offset by 2. So it looks like we need to subtract 1 from the value of the n parameter. Let's try that now. We run this but we get a runtime error. It doesn't like how we have subtracted 1 from the value of n. What if we enclose this in brackets? We try this but we get the same error when we run it. Hmm. There is something else we can do. Because we're inside a procedure, we can edit the value of n before we use it in the query. We can write the word set after begin. Then we set the value of n to n minus 1. This will reduce the value of n by 1. Then we can just use the value of n in our query. Let's run this and see what happens. We run this and see the result of accepted. It works, and the function is more flexible for different types of parameters. This question was a good example of how to work with functions and how to use row limiting. You'll want to watch this video next to see another example of solving a leet code SQL question where multiple options are used and I recommend one of them. Thanks for watching.